Now it's time for us to test out the travel buddy and we're going to try and do a beef roast in it tonight. We've got it in the coaster for the moment. As you can see we've got a microwave up the top there but that's 240 volts so we figure the travel buddy will be good for the coaster and for the four wheel drive. Now I put it on to preheat the oven a bit which is what they recommend. Uh, put my hand in just to see how quickly it gets warm and within seconds of me turning it on it was certainly hot enough inside that I couldn't keep my hand there. So it looks like it does heat up fairly quickly. Now we've got a, quite a big solar system on the coaster so we're hoping everything will be uh, wired up enough to take the 16 amps that this draws. Now I'm going to have a quick look and see what it's drawing at the moment from our gauge at the back. Okay, hopefully you can see that there. Unfortunately the air conditioner is right next to where I've got this pointed, so pulling quite a few amps. Up and down a little bit. 7.3 round to about 8 amps. Uh, we're on a mains charger at the moment, we've got solar panels, so the battery shouldn't have a problem with this. Now unfortunately the sound on the first bit of this is probably a bit worse because, uh, clever me, I forgot to plug the microphone in. So this is what we're going to try out tonight. We've got a beef roast, some potatoes, onion, carrot and a capsicum which we'll put in a bit later. So we get that prepared and we've got a little tray here. Uh, we'll look for something that fits better but at the moment As you can see that fits in there reasonably well and we should get a decent sort of roast in that. We put the bottom tray in just to keep it off the bottom shelf, that's where the heat's generated, so let that heat up. And we'll get that ready and see how we go. Okay, so we have the oven set on 200 and the timer isn't on, we just got it on so that it stays on without the timer. The baking tray is a bit crowded, uh, that's slightly less than one kilo roast which is stood up on its side just to fit all the veggies in. Um, sprayed oil on top, a bit of oil poured underneath first, and uh, we'll see what happens with this. We'll leave it for I think probably an hour initially and then I'll come back and have a look and see how it's going. The roast is in, pop that door shut. You can already feel the heat coming from that, but these are well insulated so there's no heat at all. It comes from the back, the sides, the top or the bottom. Okay, so about an hour's time, we'll come back in and check on it, see how everything's going. Okay, so we're back after an hour to check it. Something's going on in there because I can definitely smell the roast cooking. The question is, how well is it cooking? Ooh, goodness me, that is going to take a long time to cook, I think. <laughs> uh, I think this experiment is going to end rather abruptly because we're going to be waiting all night for that. That is warm, okay, but I think if we were going to be waiting for that for dinner we should have started it about midday. <laughs> so firstly I think we need it to be a bit flatter. As you can see there's still quite a bit of room in there. If we can get one that's going to fit more evenly might be better. Now I'm wondering if it would be better if we took away the rack. Uh, the amount of heat in that oven is not great at the moment I gotta say. So if that's supposed to be 200 it's nothing at all like a, a big oven. So unfortunately because I don't have the time today we're up getting up to dinner time anyway uh, I'm gonna need to abandon this experiment. As you can see, I can actually hold the pan. 
so that experiment has to be abandoned for now we'll turn that off and uh, we'll try again another day yep I can feel the heat in there the heat seems to be at the back of the oven there doesn't seem to be anything here so the element seems to be right at the back of the oven that's already so hot I can't put my hand on it so Okay, after our first failed experiment, uh, we're going to try a pie. Everybody uses these in the Travel Buddy. Now, the instructions that come with it say a frozen pie, this is frozen solid, takes 90 minutes to heat up. So here we go, we'll whack her in and come back. We'll check it at an hour and then we'll check it at 90 minutes. Pop that in. One frozen solid pie and we'll come back in 60 minutes and check it and then come back in 90 minutes and check it again here I am back an hour later I can definitely smell that the pie is warming up so the top is hotter than the sides I guess it's not going to set anything on fire the sides are only just warm the top you would almost say is hot but uh, if you can keep your hand on it, I guess it's not going to be a fire risk. The parts that are hot, this front area here, and of course the door. That little piece just on top there, don't ever pack anything around that. That is hot. A lot of people do pack these in pretty close in their four-wheel drives, and it seems safe enough as long as you keep as long as you keep this front area from here forwards away from everything else. Now this has been in here an hour let's just see how it's going that's actually pretty hot now the classic way of testing your pie mm, nice to stick your finger down in the middle and actually that's hot now it's only been an hour they say it needs 90 minutes from frozen but I tell you what that's done so Experiment number two with the treble buddy. We've got it on absolute maximum this time. I did have it on 200 for the roast. And I think that maximum probably gives you... Although there's not a figure on, although there's not a figure on there, obviously if you turn that up full, you're going to get more heat than you would on just on 200. I don't know what the temperature difference is there. They don't list it. But on full bore, that has heated a frozen pie in 60 minutes so experiment number two I would say is a success we'll turn that off and we will and we'll unplug it looks as though the coaster's wiring system has held up so that's good so this was a bit of a mystery pie sitting in the freezer. It's just wrapped in a plastic bag. I've no idea what's in it. Uh, we're about to find out. Mm. Unfortunately, it's one of those weird bacon and egg pies, which uh, I think are pretty tasteless. Uh, had I known what that was, I would have picked a beef pie out of one of the packets. But uh, in any case, I don't think it would be any different uh, heating up a beef pie to it would with this uh, bacon and egg thing. This was frozen solid. And the travel buddy managed to get that nice and hot in an hour. So, hmm, pretty good. Quite impressed. What we've got to do is more experiments with the travel buddy to see exactly how we can get a roast to work with it. But uh, we've got another roast in the fridge. We bought a couple so that we can test this out properly. We've got some sausages. So we'll be trying a few things out and uh, hopefully in this video let you know what the timing will be and what temperature to use for the travel buddy to get things cooked. A lot of people show the travel buddies working but they don't give you many details about what you need to do. So uh, hopefully we'll fill in those blanks for you. This is experiment number three with the travel buddy. What we want to do here is have a look at how quickly the temperature comes up and how high the temperature will actually get inside the oven. 
What I've got here is a thermometer. It's meant for measuring the temperature of meat. It's a Weber. Now this is the type that's got a wire connected. You can see the wire running in and it's got a temperature probe inside the oven there. So it's going to be reasonably accurate. Uh, we've got a 12 volt converter at the back there. We've got this inside at the moment. Uh, just setting it up here because it's easier to use. Don't have to keep running in and out to the coaster. So we are about half past one in the afternoon now, so I'm just going to keep track of the time. As you can see, the thermometer is already going up. Now one of the things you're going to have to learn with cooking with the travel buddy is the more you put in the oven, the slower it's going to cook. So if you start off with a whole bunch of frozen pies, then it's going to take a long, long time to actually heat up. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'll set up a tripod here and I'll come back, say, every quarter of an hour and we'll have a look at how well it's doing. Okay, here we are set up and testing. Now I've put the probe on the top shelf of the oven. Remembering, of course, that the heating element is at the bottom. There's only one heating element in the oven, as far as I can tell, and that's at the bottom, close to the back. Now I should point out that when I started the thermometer, we're pretty cold. it's a pretty cold day today, and it was showing 18 degrees C. Okay, now we are at half an hour and the oven is now up to 146 degrees still heading up obviously if you are going to cook in one of these it's going to make life a lot easier if you do preheat the oven you can see that temperature is gradually climbing even as we're watching it it will be quite interesting to see if it does manage to get to 200 i think it might because i've got it on maximum which is actually over the 200 mark I think it probably will get there and it might surpass it but let's see just how far past 200 it can get so now I'm going to wait another quarter of an hour and then we'll pop out again and see what it's managed to get itself up to we've now reached three quarters of an hour 45 minutes and we're up to 167C. Back again in another 15 minutes and see where we've got from there. Okay, now we're getting up into temperatures that would be regarded as cooking temperatures. We are almost on an hour. Why that silly thermometer keeps turning the backlighting on, I have absolutely no idea, but... Uh, <laughs> it just seems like it wants to do strange things. Now rather interestingly I put the temperature probe down on the bottom shelf which is closer to the heating element and I expected the temperature to go up. It was sitting on about 174, it hadn't moved for a while. After putting it down on the bottom shelf, the temperature has dropped. That's surprising because it's now considerably nearer the heating element. So let's try again and put it back on the top shelf and see if that goes up. After moving the thermometer back to the top shelf, the temperature has increased again on the thermometer. So like a conventional oven, Although the heating element's at the bottom, the most of the heat is going to be sitting at the top of the oven. So it's taken about an hour and a quarter for it to get up to full temperature. Whether it'll actually hit that magic 200 mark, I don't know. The oven's sitting on 198. It's been up to 199. Perhaps that's as much as it's going to manage today. 
You have to excuse the beeping, the stupid thermometer goes off its face when it reaches almost the set temperature that you want. Now what we're going to do is chuck some sausages in and we'll see how much that affects the heat in the oven. I've noticed a lot of people with the travel buddies actually wrap what they're cooking with tin foil. Okay, as you can see, putting the sausages into the oven has had an immediate effect. The temperature has dropped right down to 128. It will gradually build back up. But now we're going to find out how long it takes for those sausages to cook. Okay, well, we can see they've started to cook. Nothing really significant yet definitely going to be a while yet before they start to cook properly we'll just seal that up again and put them back and give it another 30 minutes at least okay we're back again check and see how they're going Okay, definitely on their way to being done. So what we can see from that is the sausages at the rear end of the oven, once they were turned over, are showing a bit of browning. The ones at the front of the oven, nothing. So we'll just switch the sausages around now. We'll put the front in first. And I think probably another half an hour. I think this time I'll leave the tin foil off the top. Uh, just to get some of that moisture out. Obviously when you're cooking with the travel buddy you want to have a fair bit of time on your hands and I guess one of the main reasons you'd have one of these is if you're doing long trips three four or five hours in the car is going to see a meal available at the end of it if you've got it cooking while you're running. Is it going to be great for when you're sitting at a campsite? Well yes it is really because there's not much of an alternative. Not many people are going to carry around a gas oven, uh, especially if they're only taking the 4x4. This is nice and small. It'll fit in just about anywhere. But even though the Travel Buddy does take a while to cook, it definitely gets there. Looking at the temperature here, 186 degrees C. It's a slow cook temperature but definitely a cooking temperature so it does get to usable temperatures for properly cooking meals now the sausages have been in there for ooh, what is it an hour and a half long time they were straight from the fridge not the freezer so let's have a look and see how they came out Or perhaps I should say, let's have a look and see if they're done. Now let's just have a look. Yep, these ones have browned on the bottom. So the back of the oven is certainly hotter than the front of the oven. So it's a good idea to turn, turn the tray around when you're cooking to even out the cooking process. Okay, so the sausages are actually done now. That took an hour and a half seems like a long time I know but if you're sitting in a car and the journey is a couple of hours an hour and a half is going to go by in the blink of an eye really so while you're driving along you can be cooking up your next meal another day and another test for the travel buddy this time I want to see how well it makes bread one of the things you like to have on the road is some fresh bread or a freshly baked bun. Now I'm cheating here. Uh, I'm not making the dough by hand. Uh, it's not really cheating for when we're using the coaster because we do actually take this bread maker with us in the coaster. So eh, it means I'll have to use the generator to make the dough, but it's a hell of a lot easier than making it by hand. Now, if we're off in the four wheel drive, yeah, we can make up some damper or do something quick. 
um, we'll see how we go when we get out and start testing this thing on the road but uh, I want to know how these things work well before I get out there so this is the bread making test the dough is ready I've got a silicon loaf maker it should work as well in the travel buddy as it does in normal ovens the travel buddy isn't going to get as hot as a normal oven so I can't see any real problem with using it so I'm about to put the dough in and we'll see how it all turns out looks like the bread maker's done a fairly good job in getting the dough ready that may be a little bit too much for the little bread tray I've got here at the moment so uh, we'll just put part of that in I've reduced that to about half of the bread tin I have to call that a bread tin when it's made of silicon but uh, I'm not sure what you call them when they're not made of tin okay so we've got the dough in the bread tray we'll pop that in the oven I'll come back and check it in about half an hour and see how it's going so it will be interesting to see how that turns out pop that in the oven and we'll be back in half an hour to check on it see how it's going and later on we'll cook this bit as well for the moment I'm just going to pop that back in the bread maker and uh, come back and check on it later. That's been 40 minutes now and uh, let's have a quick look and see how it's going. One thing about these is they are not as hot as an ordinary oven so you can pull things out with it too much danger of burning yourself okay well that's obviously started to cook let's see if it's finished cooking because the silicon's not hot like metal you can hang on to that too let's put it over here a bit well it's coming out clean does it mean it's done could be that was from the back of the oven. I did, I did turn it around part way through. So um, the browning is from the back of the oven because that's where the heat is. If I'd turned it around a little bit earlier, I guess I would have got a bit more browning on the other side. But uh, that's just a matter of learning how these things are going to work. Now let's see if she pops out of the tray easily enough. I think it will. Yes. Okay. Now that's not a bad little loaf of bread, I guess certainly more cooked on this side this side does feel a bit softer Let's just recheck that that is fairly soft there I'm not sure if it's a hundred percent cooked but we'll let it cool down because there's nothing coming out on the spike I think it might be all right I don't want to overcook it okay since the oven's hot there's no harm in doing the second loaf now. I could put it away in the freezer, I guess. Do it later on. But since everything's nice and warm now, that isn't quite as much dough as the other loaf. But it seems like it rises a lot anyway. So I'm expecting that to at least come out of the top of there. I did say 30 minutes for the other loaf but I actually came back and checked it at 30 and it wasn't looking like it was done and I left it for another 10 minutes so 40 minutes that's not too far off what you'd ordinarily cook so we'll pop this one in it's slightly smaller than the other loaf so that one I will leave for 30 minutes and 15 minutes about halfway through I'll turn it around and see if that helps with the browning now the second loaf's been in there for 20 minutes at the moment. I'm just going to take it out turn it around. It's not browning yet. I don't know if it'll have any effect. I may turn it around again a little later. But uh, back again in about another 20 minutes. I think it'll probably take that long to see if it's done. The first loaf has cooled down now, so we're going to have a look and see just how well that cooked. Well, 
Oh, it's quite nice and aerated. Yeah, it's definitely cooked. It is cooked all the way through. As I say, that side was a bit softer, but that's cooked. Probably a little bit doughy. Perhaps if I'd given it another five minutes after I turned it around, we would have got a nice bit of browning on this side. It does look a bit pale, but uh, it's cooked enough. Let's see how... Very soft at the moment. It's still a little bit warm. Let's just put a little bit of butter on there. Butter's not as soft as it could be, and the bread's a lot softer than it could should be at the moment because it's still warm but so let's see how it tastes hmm good tastes like bread <laughs> nice tasting bread you can get a bit of the crust Very good, very good. So that's definitely a pass. The Travel Buddy is certainly good at cooking bread. And if you preheat it first, it's not going to take you much longer to cook than it would in an ordinary oven. So very, very good for on the road for doing a bit of bread. Mmm, yum. Now, of course, because the first roast failed, I'm going to have to try it again. What I've got here is a rolled chicken roast. Let's just have a look at the label. That is just under a kilo as well. Now, with chicken, we're definitely going to have to cook it really well. You cannot undercook chicken because of the risk of salmonella. So, the cooking instructions for this say so that in an ordinary oven at 190 C it takes an hour and 20 minutes per kilo so our oven is preheated it's good and hot we've been baking bread in it all morning so will that cook in an hour and 20 minutes I have my doubts but I'll put it on for that length of time and we'll have a look at the end of that and see how it's going First of all, of course, we'll put some aluminium foil on the top. Helps keep all the juices and the heat in while it's doing its initial cooking. Now, this is thawed. It's been in the fridge. It's not frozen. So we've got that nicely sealed around the edges to keep all the moisture in as it cooks. It's quite cold on the bottom, so it's going to reduce the temperature of the oven for a while. But since it's preheated, the effect wouldn't be as much as it would be on a stone cold oven. So we'll pop that in, get it right to the back, because that's where all the heat is. Pop it in, and we'll be back in an hour and 20 minutes to see how it's going. That's an hour and 20 minutes. Be a little bit warm on the fingers. Try and keep my fingers on the aluminium foil. Get that closed and keep the heat in. Let's just see how that goes. I'm pretty sure that will not be cooked yet. And this is a rolled roast, so it's not got a bone in it. Let's have a look. How is that doing? No. Okay. Not done yet. We're still raw in the middle. So definitely going to be a little bit longer yet. And pop her back in. Right to the back. As far as it'll go. And we put the timer on for another 40 minutes. It's taken now 2 hours and 20 minutes. But the roast is done. So... Finally, we have a success on our second roast. So what have I learned over the last few days of testing this little oven? I guess the main thing I've learned is that 
it does take considerably longer to cook most things than it does in a conventional oven. It's 12 volts, so we can't really expect it to uh, produce the power of either a standard house electric or a house gas oven. Yes, I made a mistake when I cooked the first roast. My fault entirely. Really not the oven's fault. I just didn't have enough time left in the day to get the roast on. I gave it a go, but no. I should have waited. Uh, pies. If you're doing pies in it, absolutely lovely crisp crust. And do remember that the more you put in the oven, the longer it's going to take. I got one pie from frozen to cooked in an hour. I suspect if I'd used two or three or four pies, it would have taken longer than that. It probably would have taken the full 90 minutes or maybe even a little bit more. If they're frozen, that cold has to be overcome by the oven before it even starts cooking. If you can, preheat it at least half an hour to get it up to temperature. If it's preheated, it's going to save time cooking. Whether it saves minute for minute, I don't know. I can't test that out. But it seems to me to be worthwhile to have it preheated so that whatever you've got inside it is going to start cooking a lot quicker. Bread, very good. Uh, very impressed with the bread because that cooked almost as quickly as it would in a standard oven. Doesn't brown quite as much. You don't get the nice crispy crust. You could leave it in there longer, but it might dry out. So it doesn't matter. It does the bread nicely. The bread's beautiful to eat. It's fairly quick at about 40 minutes. So overall, I think we're going to be really happy with the Travel Buddy. Uh, the next thing, of course, is we're going to take it on the road when we do some trips and give it a real test out there. Of course, you using it at home. Uh, life's a bit easier. I've got access to all the equipment here that I need. And if something goes wrong, I can go back to using the house oven. Out on the road, we're just going to have to make allowances for the fact that it takes a bit longer to cook. But very happy we bought it, and I think we're going to enjoy using it. If you're going to buy one, remember, it's an Aussie company. Great to support Aussie businesses. We always love to buy local when we can. And this is probably about the best you're going to find on the market. Everybody with a four-wheel drive these days seems to have one. We were sort of a little bit late on the bandwagon, I guess, but uh, we had to spend money on other things. This had to wait until we had the money available. Now I've got it. Very happy with it. Okay, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, and it's been a long one, I know, uh, click that thumbs up button. And uh, if you like the channel, you like what we're doing, of course, this sort of gear is not the only thing we do. We travel around WA and have a good look at different attractions, different towns, the history of places. We've got stuff on Australian folklore, birds, animals, pretty well anything to do with WA, we try to cover it. So if you enjoy that sort of content, Subscribe below, click that bell icon, and you'll get notified every time we put a new video up. New videos out every Saturday morning, and sometimes on a Wednesday too when we've got spare footage. Thanks for watching, catch you later. Cheers.